Welcome back to Tea Time with Coffee. In case you're confused, I'm spilling tea whilst drinking coffee. I don't know if spilling tea is still like a thing. I don't know if we still say that, but I, I'm gonna stick with it. I like it. As a tea lover, I don't know, it feels, it feels um, comfortable for me. So, in case you're wondering, that was me just feeling where the hole was before I drink. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Also, what I often do, and I didn't even notice this until like multiple people pointed it out to me. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I do do that. I like stick my tongue out a little bit to make sure I find the whole, just like no things. So, <clears throat> welcome back to part two. If you missed part one, you're really gonna, you're really gonna, wow. <laughs> I, think, I think there was a glitch in my system. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Um, you're really gonna wanna catch up, okay? You're gonna wanna watch that, come back. Trust me, it's worth it. We're on, we're on the third near death, potentially life threatening circumstance I have faced in just the last 10 days. Now, I don't know if, if God is just trying to like, give me content. Like, I don't know if he's like, I don't know, the channel's kind of getting stale. You know, just give her something to work with. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm trying to figure it out, but I feel like things come in threes. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that in their life, but I feel like it's like your washing machine breaks, then your mirror breaks, and then your favorite makeup palette shatters. Like, I feel like things just happen in threes. And I'm really hoping that this was the third and final installment of Molly Might Die, because I'm kind of over it, to be frank. So <clears throat> it has been one week since we moved in to this lovely new apartment. We have like a thing, like a lot of the buildings we've lived in have like frequent fire alarms. It all started in my second LA apartment, this one. My third LA apartment, this one is very similar, though not as bad. And then the BC place that I've been living in, my parents' place that I've been living in for the past six months since like January, also has frequent fire alarms. So it's not just an LA thing, it's just like, I feel like big buildings, right? Like big buildings with lots of people, I feel like it's just more frequent for fire alarms to happen because all it takes is like one person burning toast and opening their door to the hallway for a smoke detector to go off, right? So I feel like it's just, it just happens in big buildings. Um, but we moved in here last Saturday, today is Sunday. So last Saturday night to Sunday morning was our first night here. And at the beautiful, beautiful hour of 2.30 a.m., the fire alarm goes off. And again, I'm pretty used to this. All of the apartments I have lived in in the last like three, four years of my life have had frequent fire alarms. So this is nothing new to me, though I will say the one in this building is particularly ear piercing. Like they've really got that like shock value on lock. It's loud and painful. Honestly, we're not panicking because again, we're so used to hearing fire alarms. And honestly, I think that's like the dangerous part of living in buildings where fire alarms frequently happen because I have heard, I have experienced, like I wanna say probably 30 to 45 fire alarms being conservative um, in the last couple of years at the different buildings, total, like combined, and it's literally never been anything. So you kind of start to get a little complacent, right? And I think that's like the danger of experiencing frequent fire alarms and them all just being nothing is you don't, it's no longer a panic. That said, I think this is like one of the only in the middle of the night ones. I think at my last LA place, we had like one 5 a.m. one. And at the BC place we've been living in, there was one like 10 or 11 p.m. one. But this is the first true like middle of the night, 2.30 a.m. And I had woken up like 30 minutes prior around two. I used the bathroom and was just laying in bed being unable to fall back to sleep. So I'm actually kind of grateful for that because I wasn't as jarred. Like, I feel like hearing that ear piercing alarm in the middle of the night when you're deep asleep is so much worse. So I'm grateful that like something in me was like, don't go back to sleep. And I was awake when the alarm went off. That said, this is a reminder to everybody, but especially those with disabilities, to find an accessible exit at a new place you live at a friend's house you might, or a friend's apartment you might be staying in, um, at a new job, find the accessible exit for you right away. First day you move in, first day you're at that job, first night you're staying with your friend. Find your accessible exit right away, make that a priority because we didn't. 
And again, as I explained in the last video, um, being in an emergency as a blind woman is incredibly vulnerable, especially given I literally don't know this complex at all. This is a complex, so there's multiple buildings in a gated community and it's big. Like about 1500 people live here. It's not like a small space to learn. So I had, and it's it's pretty complicated, wouldn't you say, mom? Yes. It's not an no, easy. No, it, it's not easy. It's very complicated. Luckily we've done it a number of times. Now we have, but yeah. the, the first time, no. last three, we got, like we got lost trying to find the exit. And thank God again that I had my mom, because if I was alone, I mean, I would have been absolutely panicking because again, like we just moved in hours prior and I did not know my way around here at all. I have a cane. I'm not used to using a cane. I was literally not even a full week into using my cane at that point. And so it was very alarming, but also not. Like the alarming part was like, I was like, wow, this is a wake up call. I really need to be more diligent about making sure I find my accessible exits right away when I go to new places. But it wasn't alarming in that I thought there was an actual emergency or fire. I poked my head out into the hallway and our next door neighbor who's lovely, poked her head out, we had met her earlier that day. And she looked at me, she goes, this never happens. It hasn't happened a single time since I've moved in. And we were like, oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll go then. And so we left and we, the way our staircase, our closest emergency exit goes, it leads to the back of the building that we're in of the buildings on this site. And there was a couple people there, um, but we decided to like go to the front to see what was going on. So we scoot our way to the front. There's the LA fire truck. It's just one fire truck, little group of people. Everyone's kind of like, you know what's going on? What's going on? No. False alarm, just as suspected. We went on our merry way back to bed. <laughs> then, last night we got together with my beautiful friend B and I'm telling her about just like all the hecticness that's been going on in my life. Again, some of which I have shared, some of which I have not. And just saying like, I just really genuinely feel like I am being tested this year and it's been really hard and I'm really ready for like the clouds to clear and the rainbow to be here because I have been struggling and it's been really, really rough. And honestly, I'm very happy that I have the job that I do and that you guys give me the opportunity to do what I love every single day because this has been one of my only reliefs is like getting up and making content and sharing with you guys um, and hopefully uplifting or making you smile or educating you or just sharing the ups and downs with you because um, even though I'm not ready to share some of them, it just, it gives me purpose. And I think I would have been really lost this year without having this outlet. So thank all of you for like being here and caring and wanting to be a part of my life and my journey because um, yeah, it's, it's been a really rough year. I would say this has been the hardest year I've had since becoming a content creator. Like the hardest year I've had in the last eight years probably. It's been really challenging and I just hope it lets up soon, but. I, so I'm telling her that and she's like myself, like very spiritual and we we're just talking about it and she's giving me advice and um, I left feeling very like uplifted. I left and I was like at peace, you know, I was just like, you know, it is going to come to an end and I will be a stronger person because of this and the clouds are going to clear and there is going to be a beautiful rainbow at the end that reminds me of why I went through the dark clouds and I was just in this very peaceful mindset. And despite being in this peaceful mindset, I did struggle to fall asleep, um, but probably around like 1.30, 1.45, I fell asleep. Um, and then at 4 a.m. I woke up needing to go to the bathroom and I get up, I go to the bathroom. Now it's worth noting that when we came home from seeing our friend B, the air conditioning unit was not working. It was very hot in here, it was like 80 degrees and we keep it around 72. So we were like, that's strange. So my mom like turns the temperature down. She's like, I haven't set it that way, this is so weird. Fast forward to 4 a.m. when I get up to pee and my mom is deeply asleep. I go to turn the bathroom light on and it's like flickering and like struggling to turn on. And I click it again and it's like doing the same flickering, which is so creepy, I like hate that. And for some reason our bathroom light makes a really weird noise. It goes like, mm, doesn't it? Yes. It's awful. It's, it's really awful. So you can imagine when it's flickering and it's 4 a.m. and it's going, Ugh. it's like kind of creepy. And then they finally like turn on. I go to the bathroom and I go to turn them off. And now they're not turning off. And I'm like, this is so frustrating because the bathroom is in the bedroom. So if it's really bright, it's like kind of annoying, but whatever. Like 
being blind and having constant flashing lights, I'm very good at sleeping with bright lights. So I was like, whatever. Tried one more time, they finally went off. I was like, oh, thank you. Climb back into bed and I'm not able to fall asleep again. Just like last Saturday. And around 4.30, so again, around 20 to 30 minutes after I woke up initially, you guessed it, the fire alarm went off. We're like, oh my God, our neighbor must have been lying when she said this has never happened. <laughs> so we're like, like grumpy, like getting the jacket on and grabbing the shoes. And I'm in my PJs, my onesie as I always am. And again, I've said this in, in this video over here when I have to call the fire department in the middle of the night, I'm always so happy in the state of emergency in the middle of the night that I am, when I'm like wearing pajamas to bed. I don't sleep naked, can't do it. I find it uncomfortable. God bless to those who do. It's not for me. And I'm always pleased with myself when I'm comfortably in my PJs when an emergency takes place. Actually, yeah, okay. So when I said earlier that like, I never experienced a middle of the night fire alarm, that's not true. I did that one time last summer at my friend's house, but that was a house. I've never experienced a middle of the night fire alarm in an apartment building. Anyways, we're begrudgingly getting stuff on. And at this point, we're like only really leaving because it's so ear piercing, we don't want to stay. We're not actually leaving because we think it's anything. And again, this is the terrible part of being in buildings where this type of thing happens frequently. And I want to remind you to never get complacent. When there is an alarm, always leave. And it is always shocking to me because we do always leave, especially when we have the animals, simply because again, the animals get really anxious with the sound. But it's always shocking to me how the people who exit the building are generally always people with young children or animals. And there's always very few. Isn't it true, Mom? Yes. There's always hardly anybody yeah. that leaves these buildings. And this has been consistent across the last four buildings that I've lived in who have had fire alarms happen frequently. Barely anyone ever leaves. And it is alarming, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, but it's alarming. And I'm sure first responders, policemen, firefighters, EMT, it must be EMS, EMT, emergency medical technician, emergency medical, <laughs> EMS, EMT. <laughs> this is the problem when you live between two countries. Maybe it's different in each country or maybe it's the same in both and I'm just dumb right now. Let me know. So anyways, I'm sure it's very frustrating for all of you who are incredible first responders, put your life at risk every single day at work, put your life on the line to save others. I'm sure it's very frustrating for all of you as well when you, come to an emergency situation or a potential emergency situation and you see very few people having exited a building. That must be just so frustrating because you know, as I now know, any time could be the emergency. Any time could be the real time. We leave and um, we go down the same back staircase that leads us to the back of the building. And there's like four or five people out there, one of whom has a dog. And so it's two two couples. It was just two couples and us, Mom? It does, it was- No, it was two couples, yeah. a friend, and us. Yes. So there was five, six, seven of us total, and a dog, a husky. And we're all standing there just outside of our exit door, just outside of the exit door, and we're all just kind of like hanging around chatting. We're like, does this happen usually? Because like we literally just moved here last Saturday, then it happened last Saturday, it's so wild. They were like, no, it's never happened since we moved in, but we're pretty new. And then the other couple comes out and they're like, does this usually happen? We're pretty new here. And we're like, we're new here. We just moved in. But this happened last Saturday. They're like, oh my God, we moved here two months ago and it hasn't happened since we moved in, but we were away last Saturday. So we missed it. So we're all like kind of figuring this out together. And as we're all standing around chatting, we keep taking note that there's like a weird sound. And we're like, oh, it's probably nothing. But do you hear that sound? That sound is kind of weird though. Blah, 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 blah. And we all just kind of like keep going back to this sound that we're hearing, which is like a rumbling. It sounds almost like thunder, but it is, it is Los Angeles. She ain't thundering, okay? And so we're hearing this like rumble and we keep referencing it, but then moving on until boom, boom, flame, sparks. There's an explosion and that's what everybody, I can't see it, I so I don't know what's going on, but they all start screaming like, oh my God, oh my God. And I can feel that everybody is like frantically backing up. And I am facing actually this exact direction that I'm facing you guys right now. There's two people beside me, three in front of me, my mom beside me on the other side, and then the explosion came from my right. 
And so I can feel that all of these people, so the closest people to the explosion are my mom, me, and the girl across from me. And I can feel that all of these people are starting to like back up that way, further away from where the explosion happened and are like absolutely freaking out. And they're like, oh my God, you saw that, that huge splash. Oh my God, the flame, blah, blah, blah. They're like freaking out. And they're like, we gotta go. And so we all start, everybody starts like frantically kind of running, but all of us are relatively new. So none of us really know. And again, this is like a complex. So it is a little bit confusing because there's lots of different pathways. One girl, I guess, or one person starts running towards where the explosion was, which would be the general way if we exited the back staircase, we would go towards that way to get into the rest of the complex. So that that's probably why they started going that way. And then they're like, wait, we shouldn't run to the explosion. And then they were like, but where, like this way, there's just nothing. Like, where are we gonna go? And that's when somebody's like, I think there's a gate this way. And so we all, we all jump up onto this flower bed and I am not expecting that <laughs> because I've never gone this way because the times I have exited the stairwell, I went around to the right, not to the left. And again, the left isn't really anything like you wouldn't traditionally go that way. That's why we all have to step onto a flower bed. And everybody's running ahead. And again, I'm feeling super frustrated that I cannot just quickly and easily and confidently run to safety like other people can. But thankfully the guy with the dog was kind of stuck behind us because his dog was like freaking out a little bit. And so he was with us. So I honestly felt very grateful that like he had to stay kind of behind with us too. And we jump down from the flower bed, go around the other side of the building and it's now like pavement and there's this guy and he yells out his window like do you guys know what's going on and we're like there's an explosion <laughs> and this man has the audacity to say so should i leave the building yes sir what didn't you understand about we just witnessed an explosion <laughs> i would exit the building and so we all end up going around front. There is not one, not two, not three. There is seven fire trucks. And again, in the city like Los Angeles, they ain't sending out seven fire trucks if it's not a real situation because this is a huge city and they just can't like give out resources like that if it's not needed. And I, again, they always have to send fire trucks when it was like when a fire alarm goes off and always they only send one. But there is seven and a lot of people fully cross the street. Like they are on the other side of the street from the complex. They don't wanna be anywhere near this complex. But there's also just as many people that are in the front of the complex, kind of in the driveway area to the, like where the gates are. And um, we can now not only smell smoke, but see smoke, well, I can't see it, but everybody else can, see smoke billowing out from one of the garages. We're all kind of standing there chatting, explaining what we just saw, because we, our little group was the only people who actually witnessed an explosion because everybody else was way at the front of the complex and we're at the back where, where it happened. So we're like telling them what we saw and what just happened. Everybody's kind of chatting. We're like, what were you doing when it happened? And somebody's like, I just got home from the bar. And I was just, and I was like, oh my God, the last thing I would want, I'm so glad I was not out drinking because the last thing I would want is to like hit the hay, a little bit drunky drunk, and then be awoken to that. Like how jarring would that be if you had the drunk spins and you're like a little bit out of it and loopy and drunk, that would not be a fun time. Um, meanwhile, I thought, I was like, somebody has moved into this place, like before I saw the explosion. I thought, somebody has moved into this place around the same time as us, who consistently on a Saturday night thinks they can come from the bar and drunk cook, and they cannot, and they keep setting this alarm off. That was like my idea in my mind of what was going on until the explosion happened. Then I was like, mm, something's going down. By the way, I'm gonna have my editor like put in some footage, because um, we did get some clips. Building one? Yeah. Yeah, us too, so... Oh, I smell it. Uh, yeah, oh, our, I smell yeah, it. Oh, our, uh, our. Yeah. No, we... So we... So then um, we're all standing around. I was just thinking, like, thank God I was not drinking. Because I just feel like that would just be so much worse to be awoken from a drunk sleep. Um, and be kind of losing it out of it. And so a lot of people, not surprisingly, were in that state. So there was a lot of people who had like just gotten home from the bar who were like still drunk and kind of silly. And um, there's tons of firefighters now. And um, 
that is when the community manager comes out or the like property manager comes out and he very kindly comes like straight over to where my mom and I are. And he's like, it's, it's all okay. It was in like this building. The buildings are numbered. I'm not gonna say which number I'm in or which number it happened in because safety, but the buildings are numbered. So we'll just say like, oh, it happened in building 10 and we live in building nine. So we live in the one like next to the building it happened in and both those buildings like back onto the same kind of alley. Uh, and that's why we had witnessed the explosion at the back of the building. And um, so he was like, I think you're probably good to go back inside. And we were like, honestly, until the firefighters tell us we are, we're not gonna go back inside. So if some people started to like meander back in, but we were like, there was still a solid group of us that were like, no, thank you. I would like more information. And I'm very glad because that's when a second explosion happened and we heard the boom, boom, boom again. And now there is even a stronger smell. This is not just the smell of smoke now. Now we're smelling like burning rubber, like a burning tire. It's like burning rubber smell. We, there's a security guard walking by with the police officer or the um, firefighters. He's like, get the keys to the unit. And so we're like, is it a unit? Like what is going on? And then they bring the fire like ladder up to a third floor apartment. So we don't know what's going on. I still don't understand some of these things. I don't understand where the unit comes in now that I know what happened. I don't understand why they put the ladder to the third floor now that I know what happened, but whatever they did, it happened. And so all in all, we ended up staying out of the building till 6 a.m. And that's when we went back in. And when we were heading back in, they were like, but just make sure like if the alarm does go off again to exit quickly. And I was like, A, comforting, B, yeah, of course. So before we went up at six, we were all like in the lobby now. So we weren't outside, but we were in like the lobby of the main building of the complex. Everybody was kind of chatting about like what they thought it was or their experience or which building they're in or blah, blah, blah. A couple of people started talking about how their lights were flickering and their AC units weren't working. Remember that detail I shared earlier? The air conditioning unit was not working. I go to turn the bathroom light on and it's like flickering and like struggling to turn on. This is where it's relevant. So everybody said, like, yeah, my AC unit was going haywire and my lights were flickering. And the girl was like, yeah, when I like turned on all my lights to, to leave um, because the alarm, like all my lamps were like flickering and they wouldn't turn on. So we ultimately ended up from all the emails we've received from, from the building management and what we had heard while we were still down there from the fire department and from the community manager is that an electrical box caught fire for one of the buildings, then perhaps another one, and also the communications room caught fire, which is in charge of like Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And so that's why electricity and things like that were all hay haywire. Our power was off when we came back and was off until 9.30 this morning. And our Wi-Fi also was not working. And they like sent out an email saying like, if you work from home, uh, come up with other arrangements. We're not sure when you'll get Wi-Fi back. So that's fun. Basically, we come back in and like 35, 40 minutes later, the alarm begins to go off again. And I was still hearing some rumbling and I, I was scared because like where our unit faces is kind of the direction of where the explosion was. I was freaking out um, and the alarm went beep, but then it stopped really quickly. Like it stopped as quickly as it started. And so we didn't exit, like it was fine. But my mom like looked out the windows and she could see that the electrical box for our specific building was now taped off with like the crime tape and it was open. So um, fun times. The backup generators are coming in handy and that's what happened. So all in all, life's a little bit wild right now. I don't know, I don't want us to tell you. I'm just done with it. I'm done with it. That's that's the third, third time's the charm. We're done. We, we're done with these wild experiences happening a little too close together for my comfort. And I don't know if God is trying to tell me that it's not my time to go because Lord knows there's been a few times this year when I would like to have not been living. But <laughs> yeah. I think he's trying to remind me that Molly, it is not your time to go. You've got to stay, stay tight, keep going, push through. And uh, that's what I'm going to take away from this and I will keep chucking along. Well done, Molly. Um, so thank you for coming with me for this 
little journey. Wild journey. Yes. And uh, share your fire alarm stories down below or your near death experiences. I'd love to hear it. And until next time, you can click over here to hear this wild story from my life or over here to hear this one. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.